Good morning, everybody. Monday morning again. Mr. Mills back with your first math lesson of the week. We are going to once again start with our mental maths, looking at different areas of maths that we've covered that we need to keep going back to and recapping. There's four questions on the screen for you again this morning to have a look at. There's also, and I keep forgetting, this clock face here. This clock face is there for you to try and tell the time. I think I mentioned it on Friday and then forgot to go through the answer. Um, on Thursday, I just completely forgot that it was even there. So today, let's see if Mr. Mills can remember. We'll go through the four questions, also tell the time on the clock face, and then we'll get into our lesson. Pause the video now. Question number one, how many thousandths are there in one hundredth? Think of that thousandth square we looked at on Friday. There was lots of individual little rectangles. We said one hundredth is one square. So within that one square, there are a further 10 little rectangles. You might have remembered that from Friday inside. So how many thousandths are there in one hundredth? There are 10. Two, find seven eighths of 32. 32 is my whole, my bar, if I was doing it on a bar, broken up into eight. 32 divided by eight is four. So each individual section would have a four in it. And then the numerator says seven. So I'm interested in seven of those fours. Seven lots of four would give me the answer 28. Question three, work out five and three quarters subtract an eight. Now we looked at mixed number fractions, takeaway fractions um, a week or so ago. Let's see if we can remember how to do it. First thing we said when we've got something like this is we convert the first fraction into an improper fraction. Five times four is 20. Add on my three is 23 quarters. 23 quarters, subtract an eighth. Well, I've still got denominators that are different, so I've still got to do a little bit of work before I write the answer. Let's convert them both to be over eight. I am subtracting, remember? So we talked about maybe circling the operation so you don't forget. How do I get from four to eight? Times it by two. If I times my denominator by two, I just must times my numerator by two. 23 times two, doubling 23. Double 20 is 40, double 3 is 6. Second fraction remains the same because I use 8 as my common denominator. I times them both by 1, so they remain 8 on the bottom, 1 on the top. 46 eighths take away 1 eighth would give me 45 eighths. Convert it to a mixed number fraction. We'll do our eight times table, see how many holes I can make. So eight, 16, 24, 32, 40. I can make five holes. So five eights are 40, but I started with 45. So I've got a remaining five eights, which will make up my fraction. That definitely is a five, by the way. So five and five eighths is my missing. <laughs> Not missing, my answer at the end. Number four, how many girls go swimming? So we've got like a two by two table here. We haven't looked at very many of these, but a little bit like a bus timetable. If you've seen them at the bus stop, we're kind of using two bits of information to find the one fact that I'm interested in. So how many girls? So I'm looking at the girls column and I'm looking at the swimming column and where they both meet. That number I'm interested in. So how many girls go swimming? 71 girls go swimming. And finally, this is Moses. Remember the clock face. What time is it on the clock face? There, it is fifteen minutes past five or five fifteen. Well done if you got that. Well done to me for remembering that and not completely ignoring it like I have done over the last couple of days. Let's move on. Today we're going to look at thousands as decimals. So I'm going to have a place value grid again. I had something like this on Friday. And I am going to represent the number one. Let's pull my common counters. Let's work. Yeah, 1.083. So 1.08. So I need 
eight of these. Come on. Two. Oh my goodness. Four. Six. My computer's a bit slow this morning. Eight. There we go. And then I need three thousandths. One, two, three. So as a decimal, how would I write it? 1.083. Remember, just because we don't have any value in the tenths column, it doesn't mean that we can just leave it blank. We've got to make sure that we put the zero in to hold the value because 1.83 is not the same as 1.083. So the place value holder is important. If I was writing that as a fraction, I've got one whole, so I've got one in my ones column, and I've got 83 thousandths. Written like so. Let's take a look at a second example. This time I am going to represent on my place value grid the fraction three holes and 413 thousandths. So I've got three holes. Let's get rid of those numbers for now. Three holes, 4 tenths, so I need to bring in some tenths this time, didn't have tenths last time, I do this time, I need to get rid of some of my hundredths because I only have got one hundred this time, and I've got three thousand, so written as a decimal, 3.4, Three. First for questions then today, you are going to be looking at place values and understanding thousands of decimals on place value grids like this. Once you've done that, you're going to then move on to looking at thousands and decimals, particularly on number lines. So let me just pull a number line in. <clears throat> Make it a bit bigger. We've looked at number lines quite a bit over the last couple of lessons. We talked about trying to label the intervals and making sure that we know what the jumps are to help us with the with the working out. So I've got two numbers here marked on my um, number line, 0 0.77 and 0 0.78. So the first thing I said, remember, was to find the difference between the two. So the difference between 0 0.77 and 0 0.78 is one hundredths because the hundred digit jumps from seven to eight so i'm jumping up every time one hundred i've got ten individual jumps so i'm dividing one hundredth by ten now you might be thinking what on earth are you talking about mr mills because we've never done fractions divided by ten but actually, if you think about it, think back to the thousandth square that we looked at uh, on Friday, 100, one hundredth, should I say, divided by 10. So one of those squares divided by 10 gave us one thousandth, didn't it? So actually, we have done it, we just haven't seen it written like that before. And that's sometimes key with maths. It's seeing something maybe in different ways, but understanding how to work with it. So actually, yes, it's not how we've seen it before, but we do know what 100 divided by 10 is because we've seen it pictorially, and that's why we use that method to help us understand stuff like this. Anyway, I digress. We're now looking at 1,000th, so we know that every jump is of 1,000th. If I actually put a zero in here and a zero on there, this becomes a whole lot clearer. 
0 0.770, remember, it's not 770, 0 0.770, it's not that, because 770 is very different to 7 tenths, 7 hundredths, and 0 thousandths. So 0 0.770 and 0 0.780. And now if I count up in thousandths, 0 0.771, 0 0.772, 0 0.773, and so on. So you're going to have thousands on number lines today. So it's about trying to work that out and thinking, thinking about what I've just explained there. Finally, I'm determined today not to keep you for too long. I know Friday we had a lot of me talking, but today I promised myself not to, not to go on. Last thing is adding fractions. We've done adding fractions, but we're thinking about thousands and decimals and how they link. So bear with me. So we've got three tenths. I'm going to add that to seven hundredths. I'm going to add that to one thousand, shall we say. Right, here we go. So three tenths as a decimal, because that's what we're focusing on now, decimals as opposed to fractions. Three tenths as a decimal. If I ask you to write me down what three tenths as a decimal is, hopefully many of you would tell me to write 0 0.3, because you're absolutely spot on. That's exactly what it is. If I asked you, can you write down for me how to write seven hundredths? You've done some practice of this in previous lessons. Seven hundredths would be the same as 0 0.07. So my seven would go into my, remember this is still my place value, it's tenths, hundredths, thousandths, and so on. And if I said, write me one thousandths, you would write me 0 0.001. So what I've done here is I've just written my fractions as a decimal. So altogether, if I had to, can you write me this as a fraction? Hopefully you would tell me, well, you've got zero holes, so it would just be 371 thousandths. Now I ask you to picture again in your head. Picture that thousandths square. If I had three of my tenths shaded in, so three squares, all filled with little rectangles, ten little rectangles, that would be 300. Because I'm thinking of three rows, so if I say tenths out of full rows, not just one, that's a hundred. If I think of the full rows, that would be 101, 202, 303, which is where I get my three from. My seven hundredths, they are my individual squares. So I've got seven of them and there's 10 in each one. That would be 70, or the seven, the value in the, in the, in the hundredths column. And then one thousandth is my final digit, which makes it 371 thousandths. So I have my, of my thousand square, 371 of my rectangles would be shaded in. So you have a few of those today. Have a go at it. Let me know how you get on. I'm hoping that this is, this is okay. It's making sense to you. And we're really kind of breaking down tenths, hundred and thousandths into really small, but really quite difficult steps. Have a go. Let me know how you get on. And I'll see you.